Welcome to grade 10 math. Today we're going to continue working with factored form. This is factored form day 2. Okay, on day 1, we learned how when we looked at the equation of a parabola in factored form, we learned how to determine the x-intercepts, which are r and s, and then we learned how to use these to help us graph the parabola. Okay, today we're going to learn that when we're given the graph of parabola, we're going to learn how to write its equation in factored form. So we're going to have the parabola, and then we're going to use that parabola to write the equation in factored form. How do we do that? Okay, so when we want to write the equation of a parabola in factored form, what we have to do is plug in values for a, r, and s. Okay, we know how to find r and s. r and s are just the x-intercepts. So we can look at the graph and find those r and s values. Okay? So we can find those r and s values, no problem. But how do we find the a value? It's hard to, we can't just look at the parabola and find the a value. Okay? We need to do some calculations. So what we can do is plug in values for r, s, x, and y, and then solve for a. But how do we plug in values for x and y? If we remember, x and y just stand for all the, all the coordinates on the parabola, all the points on the parabola. Okay? Every point on the parabola has an x and a y coordinate. So if we take any of the points on the parabola and sub in its x coordinate for x and its y coordinate for y, okay, if we sub in all of that, we'll then have an equation with just one unknown variable. And we can solve for that. Okay, once we've solved for A, we can write our final equation by subbing in for A, R, and S. So our final equation would look something like this. X minus R times X minus S. But we would have values plugged in for A, R, and S. In our final equation, we don't plug in values for X and Y because that stands for all of the coordinates on the parabola. Okay, so it might look something like this, y equals 3, x minus 1, x plus 3, something like that, okay? So, let's write down a set of rules for how we're going to do all this, okay? So somewhere on your notes, just copy down what's in here. That way when you get a question where it gives you the graph of a parabola and you have to write it in the equation in factored form, you can reference your notes and remember what to do, okay? Step number one, find the x-intercepts, okay? So look on your graph, where does the parabola cross the x-axis? Those are the x-intercepts, okay? So let's say it crossed the x-axis, let's say this is at 4, 0, and let's say this is at negative 3 and 0, okay? So those are our x-intercepts, those are our r and s values. r, negative 3, oh, that's an s. R would be negative 3. Our S value would be 4. Okay? So that's how we would find our R and S values. Next up, find another point on the graph. Find another X and Y point. So, I don't know, just pick any point. Any point that looks like you have whole numbers. So, pick this point. Let's say that point was at, you know, um, 3, 4. Okay? So our x value would be 3, our y value would be 4. Next, substitute r, s, x, and y into the factored form equation. y equals a, x minus r times x minus s. Okay? Plug all of those values in and solve for a. Once we've solved for a, we can write our final equation of the parabola by subbing in values for a, r, and s. Okay. We only used x and y to help us solve for a. Okay. After that, when we write our final equation, we don't sub in for x and y. We only sub in for a, r, and s. So in the final equation, sub in for a, r, and s. Okay, let's try a question. So number one, we're going to do five examples. First example. Determine an equation in the form y equals a times x minus r times x minus s to represent the parabola. Consider, in this instance, we're going to look 
at the vertex and the x-intercepts. Okay, So we know R and S are x-intercepts, and we're going to use the vertex. Because it's a nice whole number, 3, 3, we're going to use that as the other point on the parabola that we need. Okay, If you remember our steps, step number one, find the x-intercepts. Step number two, find another point on the graph. So here's our x-intercepts, and here's the other point on the graph that we're going to use. It doesn't have to be the vertex, okay? Just any point. But based on this graph, it gave us the vertex, so we can use that one. The vertex does have x and y coordinates. And here are our r and our s values, okay? It doesn't matter which one is r and which one is s. That could be r, that could be s. But just look at where it crosses the x-axis, okay? It crosses the x-axis at x equals 0 and at x equals 6. So our vertex was 3, 3. Our x-intercepts were x equals 0 and x equals 6. Okay? So these are our x and y values because the, that, the vertex is a point on the parabola, so that gives us an x and y coordinate. The x-intercepts, remember x-intercepts are r and s, so our x-intercepts are 0 and 6. Plug all of this into the equation, and we will get our y value is 3 is equal to, we don't know a, that's what we're doing now, we're solving for a. If we look back at our steps, okay, we found r and s, we found another point, we sub everything in, and we want to solve for a. So right now we're going to solve for a. Well, first we're going to plug everything in, okay? 3 equals, we don't know a, we know x, x is 3, so 3 minus our r value is 0, x minus s, x is 3, s is 6, 3 minus 6, okay? So there's our equation with everything subbed in. We can now solve for a. Okay? We want to solve for a. So all we have to do is some algebra. Remember your bed mass, do brackets first. So 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Now let's do some multiplication. Remember when we multiply, the order doesn't matter. Okay? So we can do 3 times negative 3 first. So we'll have a times negative 9. If we have a times negative 9 and we negative 9 and we want to isolate a, we have to divide both sides by negative 9. Okay, these negative 9s will cancel. 3 divided by negative 9 in lowest terms is negative 1 over 3. So there's our a value. Our a value is negative 1 over 3. Okay. So we now have values for r, oh, I probably shouldn't have highlighted that in green, over top of green. We now have values for r, s, and a. And if we go back and reference our rule page, to write the final equation of the parabola, we need to seven values for a, r, and s. Okay? And we have values for a, r, and s. So we can write our final equation. So our final equation, just sub in values for a, r, and s, would be y equals negative 1 over 3, x minus 0, x minus 6. There's our final equation. I'll write a nice box around it so we know that's our final answer. Good. Let's try another example. Oh, and just, just remember when you write the final equation, don't plug in values for x and y. Okay? Number two, determine an equation in the form, the factored form, to represent the parabola. In this case, we're going to look at the vertex again because it's a nice even point. And we're going to look at the x-intercepts, of course. Okay. So in this question, I haven't given us the coordinates. We're going to have to look at the graph and figure them out. Okay. So this x-intercept is at negative 5, 0. This one is at negative 1, 0. And I've told us that we're going to want to use the vertex, okay, as the other point. The vertex is at negative 3, 2. Good. Okay. So now let's just jot this down on the next page. Oops, pause. Okay, and I'm back. Okay. So, where were we? Okay, 
so we're just going to jot all this information down on the next page. So our vertex was negative 3, 2. Our x-intercepts, where they cross, where the parallel crosses the x-axis, is at negative 5 and at negative 1. Okay, so our x-intercepts are x equals negative 5, x equals negative 1. Okay, so let's remember what all these values represent. The vertex is a point on the parabola, so that gives us an x and a y coordinate. Our x-intercepts are our r and s values. So if we plug all of this into the equation, okay. So let's let's just go back and look at our steps again. So the steps, find the x-intercepts. We did that. Find another point. We did that. We're using the vertex for that point. Now we're going to substitute our s, x, and y values into the factor form equation and solve for a. Okay? So, let's do that. y is 2. We don't know a. We're going to have to solve for that. x is negative 3. Minus r is negative 5. x is negative 3 minus our s is negative 1. Okay, so you're going to notice we're, we have some double negatives here. We know when we subtract a negative, it changes to a plus. So let's just go ahead and simplify that. Negative 3 plus 5. Negative 3 plus 1. There we go. Okay, now we can go ahead and solve for a. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Let's get some more room. Okay. To get a by itself, we want to solve for a, right? So we need to get it by itself. We need to divide each side by negative 4. Negative 4 is cancel. 2 divided by negative 4 in its lowest terms is negative 1 over 2. So there's our a value, negative 1 over 2. If we remember, in order to write the final equation, we just need values for a, r, and s. Okay. If we look, we now have values for a, r, and s. So we can write our final equation. Our final equation, plugging in for a, r, and s, is y equals negative 1 over 2 x minus negative 5, which will become plus 5, and x minus negative 1, which will become x plus 1. Okay, there's our final answer. Okay, if you're getting confused as to why the signs in our final equation for our R and S values appear to be the opposite of what they should be, go back and watch the last video, factored form day 1, and it explains to you why it appears different in the equation. Very shortly, essentially what it is, if we were to solve for the x-intercepts in this equation, this positive 5 would eventually be transported to the other side of the equation, making it negative. And that's why the r-value is negative. Okay? That's just a very, very abbreviated version. So go back and watch day one if you're still confused about why it appears to be the opposite. Okay. So there's two, two examples done. Let's try a third.